Good afternoon, my name is Heather Hall and I serve on the City Council here in Kansas City and I serve District 1 where you're sitting today and I just want to thank you very much for coming. <laughs> It's truly a blessing to have so many wonderful, dedicated first responders here today. And we have so many who couldn't be here today because they're actually doing what they're supposed to do, and that's protecting us. And I just want to say thank you very much for what you do and the sacrifices you and your families make every day. We are very fortunate that we have been given an opportunity to have a governor of the state who has your back, just much like I know you have his back. And we want to hear from him today and hear the extraordinary things that he has planned and um, dedicated to you and for you to make your lives better so that you can make the citizens of this state even better. So I want to introduce Deputy Chief David Zimmerman, who will introduce our next governor. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Council Member Hall, for the introduction. On behalf of the Board of Police Commissioners and Chief Darrell Forte, I welcome everyone to the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department. Regional Training Academy for the Heart of America Service Tour by Governor Elect Brighton. Uh, give you a short bio on him. Greg Brighton served four tours of duty as a Navy SEAL, earning a Purple Heart and a Bronze Star. Following his military service, he returned home to Missouri to found the Mission Continues, a nonprofit that helps returning veterans find purpose and quality jobs. A Rhodes Scholar, a best selling author. White House Fellow and an international humanitarian. Eric Greitens has been called one of the world's greatest leaders by the Fortune magazine and one of the most influential people for the world in the world by Time magazine. And on Monday, January 9th, he'll be sworn in as Missouri's 56th governor. Please welcome Governor elect Eric Greitens. Just had an excellent workout with the tactical team. We had a few of those guys uh, here to join us. Guys, really, really appreciate the, appreciate the workout. And also really enjoyed my time uh, with the recruit class as well. Thank you guys very much for having me here today. You know, yesterday, yesterday morning, we were out at uh, Zisser Tire and Auto in, uh, in Ferguson, Missouri. Uh, it was one of just many family-owned businesses that was looted and damaged in 2014. Now, none of us, no Missourian, can forget those events. Uh, the loss of life there was a tragedy, but in many ways, it was the way that our career politicians responded to turn that tragedy um, into a disaster. I was there in Ferguson. Um, I spoke to our police officers, I spoke to protesters, and it was clear what was missing uh, was leadership. The politicians failed us. If our leaders had shown up, some kind of command presence, and courage, and calm, and clarity, I believe that we could have had peace by the second night. But instead, you know, businesses like Zisser Tire and Auto were put at risk. Families were put in harm's way. A town was set on fire. And our state was humiliated around the world. I'm here to tell you that that won't happen on my watch. Leadership matters, and as governor, I'm going to work to see that our law enforcement officers, our firefighters, and our first responders have the equipment, the training, and the support that they deserve to do their job every day and every night. Well, thank you. Well, the first things that I'm going to do as governor is call on our legislature to work with me to establish a blue alert system so that we can alert the public any time that there is any attack on a police officer immediately so that we can bring the people, those suspects, to justice. And I want to say right here and right now that when I'm governor, we are going to bring the full force of the justice system against anyone who assaults one of our law enforcement officers. <laughs> For too long, career politicians have only supported law enforcement when it was convenient. When the news changed or the politics changed, their support vanished. Well, that ends now. 
I know and understand what it means to put on body armor and carry a sidearm, to say goodnight to your family and step into the dark and do dangerous work. I want all of our first responders to know that when you are out every night putting your lives on the line, that you have from the governor on down people who are going to support you in doing that work. Today, you know, we did a, did a short workout with the tactical team here. These are men and women who literally every single day and night when they show up to work are willing to sacrifice their lives to save our families. Who are willing to put themselves in harm's way to see that we can have safer streets here in the state of Missouri. They deserve to have our support. You know, one of the things that's happened since Ferguson is that we've had a problem recruiting law enforcement officers all over the state of Missouri. And it's why I am so proud of these young men and women who are here today, who signed up to serve our communities, who signed up as law enforcement recruits to serve this great city and the state of Missouri. And I think we should give them all a hand. and safe streets are a matter for more than just law enforcement. It's a matter for all of us. And that's why today I'd ask every Missourian, pastors, priests, police officers and parents, neighbors, business owners, firefighters, friends, to ask what you can do to bring our communities together and to make Missouri a safe state to raise a family. Many people believe that poverty leads to crime. Well, that can be true. It's also true that crime leads to poverty. And too often, crime and violence is measured only in lives that are lost and property that's destroyed. Because crime has become far too common in Missouri, we often forget the full effects of violence and the many ways that it destroys our communities. Violence tears at the fabric of our communities. It frays the bonds that hold us together. <laughs> It makes people afraid to leave their homes, afraid to leave their neighborhoods. It makes some people even afraid to help their neighbors. But just as peace is more than the absence of war, safety and security means more than just the absence of violence. Safety and security is something that we have to build. And to build safety and security, we have to build it on a bedrock of understanding. We have to make sure that young men and women across this state have economic and educational opportunities. And I'm committed to identifying leaders who have the wisdom, the courage, and the compassion to meet the great challenge that's in front of all of us. For the last two months, we've been hard at work identifying the leaders who are going to stand with me to keep Missouri safe. Just yesterday morning, I was honored to announce that Chief Drew Juden is going to be the new the director of the Department of Public Safety, and Captain Greg Faber will be the new deputy director of the Department of Public Safety. Chief Truden is the Public Safety Director and Police Chief in Sykeson, Missouri. He's a former president of the Missouri Police Chiefs Association and a former SWAT team commander. He's also a father and a grandfather. He knows that every day, there are men and women across the state of Missouri who are going to need his support. Greg Faber is a captain with the St. Louis Fire Department and a member of the Fire Chief's Command Staff. He was the recipient of the Firehouse Heroism Medal one of the nation's highest public safety awards for actions that are undertaken at great personal risk and without regard to one's safety. These two men are committed public servants who've taken actions that go above and beyond the call of duty their entire careers. I'm always going to have their back, and I know that they will always have yours. The mission that I've tasked, tasked them with is simple. That's to make Missouri a safe state to raise a family and to do so by supporting our law enforcement officers, our firefighters, and our first responders, and to do so by helping all of us to better understand and heal the divides in our communities. While some of our politicians' failures might have made us a national embarrassment, I know that together we can become a national example. We've got a great task before us. And given the hard facts of the present situation, it would be tempting to keep blaming our problems on the past. But on January 9th, I'll take the oath. In the Navy, we had something called a change of command ceremony. And when I take the oath on January 9th, I also know that I'll be taking the responsibility, the 
the responsibility to make Missouri safe. I am honored to be here with all of you today. I appreciate the work that all of you do. And in just one week from now, I look forward to serving with all of you. Thank you very much for having me today.